In this chapter, we will create a final rendered image of our amulet using a combination of compositing techniques with Adobe Photoshop and the post-processing software Magic Bullet Looks. So here's those final renders that I got out of Keyshot. And you'll notice that uh, with the TIFF, it actually comes in on a layer, so you can kind of change background color, and that's one of the advantages of doing that. And right now, it's only at 50%. If we zoom in, or sorry, here's uh, what it looks like at 100%. You can tell there's a lot of detail in here. Looking at all the renders, I can tell that I probably have some areas that may be a little bit too reflective, where it's really shining out like this, almost mirror-like. So if I wanted to make this look really accurate, I'd probably go back and adjust those a bit. But um, for this, I don't think we need to do any more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I, I rendered this one that you guys remember from the end of part of the tutorial, and then I also did a render of the back so that we have both of these together. And now I want to comp them into a single image and do some nice uh, compositional transitions. So I'm just going to go to the Move tool, and I'm going to drag this back here to this other background file that I've got. And now I'm going to get the other one, the crust image, or sorry, the Mount Fuji image. And what I have here is this is just a larger size file that I think these can both fit into. And I'm just going to kind of position these so that I can have them side by side looking somewhat nice together. And then a lot of times what I'll do is I just start to go through and make some small compositional, uh, not compositional, but uh, color adjustments and things like that using different layers in here. So I'm going to go to the top of this layer and this button down here, I'm going to click this and go in here to, for example, maybe like hue and saturation. I like this because it's non-destructive. It just puts it above your uh, layer file and you can change it and come back to it at any point. We can kind of add some different hues of color. I think going down negative is kind of nice. Maybe we want to give it a little bit more saturation. I think that's a little bit too crazy because those reds are really blowing out. So maybe we'll just kind of keep it what it was originally. And you can brighten it if you want or darken it, but I think I'm going to keep that at its default value. We'll close that and we can see the difference here. I just like that because the color is a little bit more rich. The rest of the file I'm pretty happy with. Normally I'll go through and I'll do some different things like changing levels uh, to get things a little bit brighter or contrast here, but I honestly like what we have already. So let's go ahead and save this off. I'm going to press Control shift s on my keyboard to bring up the hot... It's like the hotkey for bringing up save file in uh, Photoshop. And first I'm going to save it as a PSD file. Crest final renders, and then I'm going to save off a JPEG that I can open up into another program. Control shift s on my keyboard again. Now I'm going to set it so I can pick JPEG, Control final, uh, crest final renders, save, and I'll just keep it at the maximum value. I think that's fine. So the next pro uh, program I like to use a lot is called Red Giant's Magic Bullet Looks. Uh, you can just search it up on the internet anywhere. If you're watching from YouTube, just look at the description below this uh, video and you'll see the link for it or maybe I can even have it show up here. Um, it's pretty affordable and there's also some different free trials that you can try yourself. I think I have the one down here that's like $3.99 but very useful. So what we're going to do is I'll go ahead and show you that. This is a looks builder. Pretty basic interface. You can actually do video and um, images but in this case we're just going to do images. So I'm going to open up the image that we had press final renders and here we go we have it inside and now I'm going to come over here to this left side and this is where you can start adjusting the looks there's a lot of different things in here um, you can just click them and start to see what it'll do to your file I've used this quite frequently so there's a couple that I like to use often the basic white diffusion is kind of nice because it gives you just this little bit of subtle glow so I'm going to use that I'm going to say file save image as and then it, by default, it'll say crest renders underscore out. I'll just keep that because we're going to be saving off a few of these. Now we're back into Photoshop. And let's open up that image that we just saved off. And let's do Control A to select all, Control C to copy, and then Control V to paste that in top. So we're back in our PSD layer. 
And normally what I do is I just do kind of a layering system. You can see this is the difference between the before and after. I'll come in here and then maybe bring down the adjustment a bit because I don't want it too blown out. And then I'll save off another version. So file, save as. And I'll just save over top of that crest file underscores renders. And then once again, I'm coming back into Looks Builder, open up the image. And by default, it's got that white diffusion set up. Now I'm going to go down to some of the other settings. Uh, a lot of really cool stuff in here. It's really fun just to play with all the different ones. But I'm going to go down to the very, very bottom because I know that there's a couple things in here that I like the effect of. For example, Subtle Film gives you some more contrast. Subtle Film Soft will do it, but also give you a little bit of brightness. And then there's different ones. I mean, this is a little bit too much bling. Uh, swing Tilt Film, that's kind of fun because it blurs things out, gives it that really miniature look. Um, I like this one a lot, Warm Spot Focus, because it'll blur out some of the edges, but still keep some of the things in focus. And just a lot of different really cool things we can try here. So I think what I'm going to do first, this one's still blown out just a bit too much. I think I'll use this uh, Subtle Film. I'm going to save that off. File, Save Image As, File Renders Out. And then I'm just going to reopen that one because I kind of like it just as is. So now we've got that one within here that we're using, the one we just saved. Now I'm going to come in here and play with some of these other settings and see if I can find one that I like. I like this warm spot focus. I think in the end this is blurring out a bit too much, but you'll see in Photoshop we can play around with this a bit. So let's save image as. Again, press final renders underscore out. Go back into Photoshop. Closing down the old one, reopening. Control A to select everything, Control C to copy. We're coming back into this one and put it on top, Control V. Obviously, we have quite a bit of contrast on this. Quite a bit of contrast and then also quite a bit of blur as well. So one, I don't want this at full strength, so I'm going to bring it down some so that we get a little bit of the background height, uh, highlights coming out. Then also two, I like a little bit of blur on this, but not too much. So what I think I'm going to do now is do kind of like a oval or circular selection in here. I'm going to come here to our elliptical marquee tool something like this. I'm going to transform this selection a bit more. This is just something you have to experiment with on your, your own. But I think this is a pretty good setup. Enter, and then what I'm going to do now is modify. I'm going to say Feather. This image itself is 4K wide and 2K uh, vertical. So I'm going to give it a nice feather radius of maybe 300. Say OK. You'll see the marquee selection changed a little bit. What I'm going to do now is Control X on my keyboard to cut out the center. So now you can see we still have a little bit of that blur on the outside. And if I turn off all these others, you'll see what I cut out. Basically, I cut out everything but what you're seeing right here. And this allows us to have a little bit of that kind of nice glow and blur on the edges, but with the focal point being on the inside here so that you can see all the nice details. Down here, it's not blurring out so much that it's a problem. It's just looking nice. And I put the opacity at 64% earlier. Now, if we were to crank it up, you know, you could get a bit more of that blur if you really wanted to focus on that. But I do like how this is looking now. So I'll keep it around 64%. And then maybe overall, I'll get the entire image brightness up a bit. So I'll come up here and do a levels. And I think something like this is going to work out pretty well. And this is our full resolution image. You can see down here, sometimes you get a little bit of funkiness going on. 
um, in your black values because if you have like a pure black value it has a hard time blending between those you can usually take care of that by putting on another level on top of this so for example we can go levels and go this direction to remove some of that black values while still keeping it bright. Okay, I think that looks a little better. Let's zoom out. Overall, I might have just made it darker. I did, but that's okay. Um, down here, maybe let's click on this one one more. I think that's pretty good because you don't see too much of that uh, weird blending unless you really get in there at 200%, but it feels natural. It doesn't feel digital at the moment. And I think that that is going to be a final image for me. So just really quickly to show you the little changes that we added in here to get some nice details. I put all this into one group. You can see the before and after. I'll zoom in a little closer on uh, this side. So for example, before, or sorry, after, and this is previous. So just little things like that can really help your image pop. That's why I like using Looks Builder. A lot of people might use things like Nuke and other compositing programs. You can do some of this within Photoshop, but playing with it. But I just really enjoy Look, Looks Builder for how quickly it will get you those settings. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. You guys know how to take a thing all the way from ZBrush through Keyshot, build materials, and make your own beautiful amulets. I think I'll do a final wrap up of this of kind of showing you guys how to submit a turntable in Keyshot and then show you what the final Keyshot turntable looks like and then just some closing comments. This tutorial and its downloadable content is available now on my QBrush, Gumroad, and Steam stores which are linked in the description below. Watch the following video to see what is included with your purchase. If you purchase this tutorial, here is a preview of all the bonus content you will receive. Firstly, in ZBrush, I've included three different versions of the amulet. One, my final sculpted version with all the ornamentational details and destruction. Two, just the sculptural details like ornamentation. Three, a version without anything so you could follow along and create your own during the process. Secondly, you will receive the final Keyshot file demonstrated here, which contains all of the texture maps, lighting, and everything that is shown during the tutorial. The thing that I find really useful about this is having access to the material graph and seeing the complex custom materials that are created during the tutorial. This will really help you with understanding how to create your own complex materials in Keyshot. Next, you will receive all of the final PSD files showcased throughout the tutorial, including this gold-painted Mount Fuji design with all of my different layering processes, as well as the custom crest base that is used later for sculpting in ZBrush based off of masks. Also, you'll get all of the final texture maps that are showcased during the tutorial, such as these, which are all tileable. You will also receive all of the original videos in downloaded format at their full high definition resolution. Also, I have included dozens of high quality personal art images, such as my Dark Souls 3 High Lord of Walnor fan art, which inspired me to create the amulet tutorial to showcase the techniques I learned and developed during the process. Whether you purchase this tutorial or follow along for free on Facebook or YouTube, thank you for your continued support, and I cannot wait to see the epic amulets you create soon.